Hi, my name is Andreas Moritz and today I would like to debunk some of the myths surrounding the vitamin, the important vitamin B12. Many people believe that uh, we are, as a society, modern society, we are suffering from severe vitamin B12 deficiencies. And uh, there is some truth to that, but not because we are not eating enough vitamin B12, in our food, but because we are not absorbing enough of the vitamin B12. And this can have a number of reasons. And these reasons are responsible for the vitamin B12 deficiency that often uh, ends up causing an, a, a form of anemia where the blood cell, the red cell, blood cell count diminishes. Now we need B12 for basically every function in the body. Every single cell requires B12 and if there is a B12 deficiency we can experience uh, as said uh, anemia, we can uh, have pins and needles in our hands, we can uh, have brain and nervous system disorders, uh, the bone marrow doesn't function properly, we don't produce enough red blood cells as mentioned and we can have severe gastrointestinal problems. Now, one of the main reasons why there is a, such a, a strong vitamin D deficiency in our society today is because many people have stomach problems. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, we are eating a diet that is no longer in harmony with our body's requirements for nutrients and for proper digestion. Now, in fact, m many of the processed, refined, factory-produced foods are virtually undigestible. They cannot be properly broken, be broken down, and they interfere with the secretions of digestive juices, such as hydrochloric acid in the stomach. There is a, a, a particular organic substance in the stomach. It's called intrinsic factor. And in order to absorb, uh, to digest and assimilate B12, the vitamin B12, then uh, we need to have that intrinsic factor in larger quantities. If we have a diminished uh, amount of that intrinsic factor, the B12 that we may eat uh, doesn't matter through whatever source, including uh, ingested uh, supplements then we are not going to absorb it and it's going to be useless. So uh, the most important thing is to make sure that our intrinsic factor in the stomach is produced uh, at the right amounts. And uh, that is regulated by what we eat, uh, how well we you know, chew or masticate our food and uh, also uh, a second factor how, you know, whether we digest uh, the food in our small intestine. And that is a very, very important point uh, because when we eat, for example, a, a very high concentrated protein meal, such as uh, a lot of eggs or meat or you know, fish and chicken, um, because we have only the capacity to digest up to 20% of these foods, uh, the majority of them will become putrefied in our intestines. So when we have undigested protein lingering in our intestinal tract uh, for longer than even a couple of hours, then that disturbs the, the probiotic bacteria population in our gut. And probiotic bacteria are the principal uh, source of B12 that is typically absorbed at the end of the small intestine in the terminal ileum. And in that part, that's where the B12 uh, gets you know, absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to the liver. And the liver is in charge of uh, keeping B12 there. And when required uh, by the cells in the body, it will uh, you know, put that into the circulation, into the bloodstream. Uh, the cells will take it up um, and it's going to be recycled uh, in, in, in most cases. So most of the B12 uh, is recycled and used for up to six or seven years 
uh, the the amount of B12 that we need in, a, in an entire lifetime is just as much as the tip of the pinky uh, t you know, nail. It's a very, very small amount. And uh, it's, it's quite difficult to get a B12 deficiency unless, of course, we have trouble in uh, utilizing it. And uh, once again, that has a lot to do with uh, what's happening in our digestive system and not necessarily yet to do with the food that we eat, whether it contains enough B12 or not. Since the principal source of B12 are bacteria, and uh, these are probiotic bacteria, uh, when they die, they release the B12, and it's being uh, absorbed and utilized, which again is used uh, by the brain nervous system, the digestive system, and the bone marrow, foremost of all, in order to keep our body healthy, vital, and strong. Now, when a person uh, eats a lot of junk food, uh, uses uh, medication, uh, most medication, particularly antibiotics, destroy the probiotic bacteria population, um, and eating foods like meat, a lot of meat, which contains B12, but uh, it cannot really be absorbed uh, properly uh, when the digestion is not working very well, uh, particularly if intrinsic factor in the stomach has been diminished, uh, which does happen when you eat too much protein foods. So there's a, a lot of uh, here to be said about um, meat being a source of B12 or eggs being a source of B12 or dairy products being a source of B12, that it doesn't mean that you're going to absorb that. Uh, many, many uh, vegetables are actually you know, capable or you're capable of releasing B12 uh, as well. And uh, so there are uh, smaller amounts of B12 in these foods, such as bananas, uh, green leafy vegetables, um, sunflower seeds, uh, leeks, dates, dates uh, which you know, grow in, on, on uh, palms, palm trees. Uh, there are beans, there are green beans, uh, oats, carrots, uh, peas and so on. Uh, these are small amounts, but that's all we need. We don't need large amounts of B12 uh, that is prevalent more in meats, uh, meat products, but if you don't digest these meat products uh, yeah, up to more than 10-15%, uh, yeah, then uh, there's just no advantage uh, eating uh, meat products over eating veg vegetarian uh, foods. Uh, if you are, in, you know, if you do want to have a, a higher source of B12, then butter is a good source of that, and I do recommend butter, uh, you know, for most people. Uh, so that 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 would be an alternative if you are, um, you know, non-vegetarian. Um, however, once again, the the misunderstanding about B12 deficiency comes because we don't understand how the body produces its own B12. Just like cows, for example, they don't uh, have to eat meat uh, or you know, drink uh, other species' milk in order to produce B12. Uh, they derive it from the plant foods and uh, they, are, they don't have a deficiency. Uh, humans, as long as they eat natural foods, will also not develop a, a B12 deficiency. Uh, I personally had severe anemia when I uh, grew up, when I was a child, and my B12 deficiency stemmed from eating too many dairy products and animal uh, proteins um, that eventually led to severe gastrointestinal distress and rheumatoid arthritis and arrhythmia. And when I uh, stopped eating these foods, uh, my anemia disappeared, uh, so my face started to uh, become colorful again, whereas before it, I was like uh, as white as snow in my face, and I, I never had any color in my face. So that shows that uh, the, the anemia is not uh, necessarily caused by, you know, removed by eating animal products. Uh, on the contrary, animal products can contribute uh, greatly to a B12 deficiency. Another uh, misunderstanding uh, surrounding B12 is that 
uh, when you take a supplement, you think that you are going to absorb it and utilize it, but uh, that is not necessarily so. B12 uh, never comes alone. Uh, it, it is always in nature combined with other B vitamins. Uh, so when a person uh, just takes a B12 vitamin uh, supplement, uh, it is very, very, very difficult to absorb and utilize uh, because nature didn't build uh, B12 on its own or by itself. It always combined it with other B vitamins and other vitamins and minerals and other substances that are al allowing uh, the B12 to be utilized. So once again, uh, B12 deficiency has nothing really to do with vegetarianism. Um, and many, uh, most people who are B12 deficient actually are meat eaters and not vegetarians. Uh, however, uh, vegetarians can also suffer from B12 deficiency. Uh, it depends on what else they do. If they take medication or if they have used antibiotics in the past, the probiotic uh, bacteria population can be disturbed for many years and according to a new study uh, actually uh, can cause disruption for an entire lifetime. Uh, one of the best things to do to improve the digestive process is to clean out the liver bile ducts. So any accumulation of stones or intrahepatic gallstones in the bile ducts of the liver inhibit the ability to digest food properly. It interferes with the, uh, the probiotic bacteria population. Undigested food, putrefying, fermenting food, doesn't matter whether it's vegetables or meat products will lead to a diminished absorption of B12 because of the lack of probiotic bacteria which is the, the uh, major source of B12 in the body. So I hope that this clarifies the issue and uh, I can only suggest uh, eat naturally, live in a natural way uh, expose your body to the sun. B12, uh, your B12 absorption also depends on how much vitamin D you have available uh, for the, the, uh, to keep the digestive system strong and uh, vital. And so when you expose your whole body to the sun on a regular basis, you will also have a higher level of uh, your healthy bacteria populations uh, in the gut and uh, have a stronger digestive uh, absorption of nutrients uh, available to you and therefore it is very difficult uh, to actually develop B12 deficiency.